A cron job is a type of job that you can run at specified times and dates. The regular jobs start running when you create them. There are essential settings that allow you to control how Kubernetes runs the job. However, you cannot schedule the job to run at particular times or intervals. Running jobs at particular times or intervals is what the cron job resource allows you to do. The cron job resource uses a well-known cron format that's made out of five fields that represent the time to execute the command. Let's look at a couple of examples of the cron formats. So if we do one, two, three, four, five stars, this means that this job will run every minute, every hour, day, month, and day of the week. Another example would be doing star slash 10 and then four stars afterwards. This would mean that we're running the job every 10 minutes because the first, uh, first element represents the minutes. Another example is, let's say, 009, 9, 21, and then we'll do day, month, day of the week. And this one runs at 9 a.m., which is this first one, and 21, which is 9 p.m., every day, every month, and every day of the week at the top of the hour. So let's create a job that's going to run every minute. So I'm going to create a new file. I'll just do it this way. Uh, minute, minute, con, uh, yaml, and I'm going to paste it in. Uh, so let's save the file is saved. So we're going to apply it now. Minute, cron, yaml. So the job was created. Uh, and to look at the job, previously we used job, but now we're going to use cron job to look at these resources. Uh, now, if we're going to wait for a couple of minutes, we'll see that this cron job will create uh, pods every minute. So let's look at the first one that should be created. Uh, so the first one is being created. I still have a couple of the old ones running, so let's just delete those. So we're going to do kubectl. Uh, get job and then kubectl delete job. We'll say delete job, failing job, and then sleep on the job. Three sleeps on the job, and the last one that was the parallelism one. So this will also create uh, or delete all the pods that those jobs created. So in the meantime, this first uh, pod that was created by this cron job uh, uh, completed. Now, you might have noticed when I listed the jobs that there was actually a job created for uh, uh, our cron job, or rather the cron job created a job, and then this job then created the pod. So what the cron job is going to do, it's going to create another instance of this job every, every minute. So if we do the get, so this is the second one that got created, and then this one in turn just creates the pod that's going to, in our case, sleep for 10 seconds. Now, what we could do is to stop this job running. So we could either uh, just delete the job, uh, kubectl, delete cron job, name of the job, or we could also just suspend the job. So let's do that. So we're going to do kubectl, edit, cron job, minute, cron. And then we'll find the suspend down here. And we'll just change this value to true instead of false and save it. So the job was, the cron job was edited. So if you list it again, you'll see that it was suspended, meaning that it's not going to be running uh, every minute anymore. Now, if you wanted to go and change it back, you could do the same thing, edit the job, and then change it back so it's not suspended anymore. Now, in addition to the schedule, you could also configure how a cron job will deal with concurrent executions. So let's say we configure the job to run every five minutes. The pod starts, and for some reason, it takes more than five minutes to run. So what should the cron job controller do in this case? Does it create the second pod as per schedule, or does it do nothing since the previous job is still executing? This behavior can be controlled using the concurrency policy setting. The setting has three possible values, forbid, allow, and replace. The default value is allow, and this means if the previous iteration hasn't completed when the new one is supposed to start, the allow setting will allow the second instance to run. 
Setting the value to forbid does the opposite. So the pod that was supposed to start per schedule would not start. Finally, the replace will stop the currently running job and start a new one. Another configuration value that's worth mentioning is the starting deadline seconds. So you would set this in case where you don't want the job to uh, go over the scheduled time. So if the job doesn't start at the scheduled time plus this deadline, it'll be marked as failed. So let's look at this example and I'm just going to change uh, this existing thing. So deadline seconds, let's set it to 30 and then let's set this to uh, so it runs every 10 minutes, for example. Now this job needs to run every 10 minutes. And let's say the first job is supposed to start at 2 p.m., which is two hours, zero minutes, and zero seconds. The starting deadline second setting here is saying that if job does not begin by 2, 0, 0, and 30 seconds, the controller should, it, should mark it as failed. 